At the end, it really comes to very small tasks that you focus on, I guess, and the rest, like I said, is underneath. It's already there in your inner sensations and your muscle memory. And like I said, most of the time, the tasks uh, just trigger the previous tasks. You know, like imagine sound would trigger a wrist movement, so you don't have to think about it that, that much. Or intonation would trigger weight, and weight would trigger posture. Or um, intonation would trigger phrasing, you know, gradations of energy in your intonation. So basically, at the end, you just focus on, you know, artistry, the main things in the piece. Artistry, image, form, timing, and that's all. <laughs> that's what you do. And then in the learning stage, you just make it everything even smaller, even easier to focus on. And in the last stage, you let go of all of this, like it never happened. <laughs> but um, it will be still there. Hello everyone, um, today's lesson about how to focus on multiple tasks at once while playing, um, not losing any important aspects of playing such as tone, touch, you know, musical shape, etc. And um, hopefully by now you already know that piano practice is based on mental practice, you know, piano playing based on mental practice. And, um, you know, this spaced out kind of daydreaming, practicing or practicing without being able to focus, uh, to keep focus for a long time. Well, in best case, it's just a waste of time. And in the worst case, it might lead to playing related injuries, to emotional health problems. So it's always a good reminder to ourselves you know, to have this little note about your piano. We play because we're here, and not we here because we play. <laughs> and actually, this ability to hear notes ahead of your playing is a great tip and sight reading. Just saying. <laughs> okay, so um, some pianists suggest to imagine yourself playing through a piece, uh, visualize yourself performing on the stage and uh, or visualizing playing technically free but you know it's all kind of vague <laughs> i don't know <laughs> uh, so overall if there is no specific detailed tasks are given to focus on while mental practice then this kind of practice without a clear system um you know better say without a structure order you know what exactly to do and how exactly to do this uh, this type of mental practice will never work in a bigger picture of playing. You might have some fun, but not really great results. <laughs> um, any, new, any new task you are adding to your mental practice has to be connected and based on the previous task. And so you will not only be able to think about multiple tasks at the same time, but you will also be able to correct, fix, or improve one of these tasks in the system of other tasks, meaning you will never lose other tasks while focusing on a new task or correcting one of the previous tasks. How many times did I say tasks? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so we all know these examples when we would... Okay, the simplest one, let's start with the simplest one, you know, we, when we try to focus on the technical part, the musical part would suffer, and vice versa. When we try to speed up, we would also increase dynamics, or we would increase dynamics and we would speed up, you know, and if we decrease dynamics, we would slow down also. And if we, you know, need to play louder, we might end up playing some uh, accents, unwished accents. Or when we are asked to <laughs> make better accents, we will also increase dynamics. Or when we are asked to play softer, we would also soften accents. So, you know, all of the things we have to be able to kind of have on different layers. And when we fix one layer, we have to be able to still 
um, keep the same <laughs> things on, on other layers. So, and uh, the key to succeeding in this is retraining yourself to think before you speak, or in other words, to think before you play. Meaning simply not being able to touch a key without having first clear sound idea of the note. And for me, it's already a habit. And simply by bringing my hand to the key, it kind of already this action triggers my imagination. So I cannot play other way around. And I think it's really the matter of the concentration. Because when I started mental practice, I could only focus maybe uh, for two minutes. Maybe I could focus on four bars at a time, then I would go blank again, then I would come back, now again go blank. But with practice, it's actually very fast to fix. You think like you could never do this, but it's really quickly. Um, okay, so there are three stages in piano practice. Analyzing, learning, rehearsing slash performing. And in every stage we have different tasks to focus on while playing. For example, on analyzing stage. We train ourselves to focus on one task at a time, gradually adding more and more tasks to focus on at once. On the learning stage, training to focus on multiple tasks at once in a matter of a moment, making it easier and more effortless to focus on while playing. Um, so for me, after we repeat many times, after I repeat many times, it feels like all the tasks, so many tasks I need to focus, and it's kind of all over the place, but after you repeat enough, then everything becomes like very solid and very small. It feels very small. And in the last rehearsing slash performing stage, um, we train ourselves to focus only on one single task, on the music itself. <laughs> Um, on your inner world, on your creative energy. Meaning, stop focusing on any previous tasks, simply opening your heart and let the music create through you. And because all the previous tasks will be already in the inner sensations and muscle memory, you know, after this learning stage, your tone, your touch, you know, your phrasing, all of this will be under control, and yet you will be able to fully focus on, the, on, on music itself and use all that material to create. And so you just go to the energy of the music and really, like I said, that you let the music um, create through you. And I also talked about this before, when you play uh, to your audience, your know, audience also kind of is connected to your energy. So the audience is also starting creating through you. It's, it's, it's actually uh, some magic is going on, but... Um, it's just like this. In the last stage, you really have to forget about notes or any, you know, this logical mental tasks. All right, now um, um, let's just take some time and I will demonstrate to you how exactly it works um, when you practice at least. Uh, let's take a look at the analyzing stage. First, I want to give you a little note. Uh, before any playing, you need to imagine every note in a timbre or with movement and glissando in between notes away from the piano. And you need to use uh, the timbre that allows to stretch and mold the sound in your mind. Timbres like strings, voice, liquid-like watery sound, or simply a light ball of a pitch height of a note. So you could imagine sounds with movements, with glissando in between, so just keep that in mind. And if you have troubles imagining notes this way or imagining multiple sounds at once, there is a link to a playlist and a book that will guide you through inner musical ear training. You can find it in the description below. And um, honestly, it doesn't take much time to start having a progress, maybe a week or so, so just want to encourage you. <laughs> Uh, so start with just one simple task and gradually advance it to three tasks at a time. And after you become comfortable with focusing on three tasks at once, you can add new tasks. So let me show you how it looks like. So you can start with one task at a time, such as just watching your movements, watching your wrist and elbow movements. And uh, what you could you do is just, you know, you play a note and then you move your wrist, let's say, F to the right. You move your wrist 
and that's all. And then you just play next note, you move your wrist. And maybe if you need to move your elbow, you also move your elbow. Just this, you know, play note, make a movement. Oh, if down, play note, make a movement. Then try to make two tasks at a time, playing with imagination and correct movements. So now you add imagination. And uh, after you work away from the piano, then when you come back, Imagine the first three notes in timbre with movement and glissando, and then play with corrector's movement. And uh, you see, you don't have to imagine the whole line again before starting. When you just bring your attention to this musical world, maybe it's just a couple of notes, you kind of already tune into that, so you will be already there. So just imagine the first couple of notes, and then let's say I mentioned this F, A, with movement to the right, with glissando, and then I just play what I imagine. So it looks like this. Imagine the first note, play, move my wrist. Imagine the next note with movement, and again I play it, and I move my wrist, and maybe I'll move a little bit. So it looks this way. And lastly, you can add the third task. Basically, you're going to have imagination, intonation, and weight, and correct hand movements. So again, after practicing away from the piano, you can come back and then imagine the first couple of notes in the timbre was movement and glissando. Then you get weight, bring your hands nicely to the keyboard, play the note with correct movement. Then you're gonna start imagining with glissando the next note while intonating with weight and then play with correct movement. Then I imagine the next note with glissando, I intonate it with, with weight, and then I play it with corrector's movement. So basically imagination, intonation, weight. That's how these are three aspects are connected. And I also want to say, you know, um, since we're talking about connections, <laughs> when you are in weight, you know, like I said, you gather weight before playing, and, uh, you know, when you continue, weight will come naturally through your intonation because it is connected to your intonation, your sensation. So when you do intonation, you also want the weight. And um, if you also connect correct posture to weight, and again, in the description, you can find the video about it, you will also control your posture while playing. So, you see, you don't have to think about your posture and you know, losing all other stuff <laughs> or thinking about other stuff and losing your posture. So if your posture is connected to weight and weight is connected to intonation, then while making intonation, you will trigger weight and posture at the same time. Voila. <laughs> um, okay, so now also remember how I said that if you need to correct some task and um, you, you will make it within the whole system. So oh, here's a good example. If you need, for example, to improve your elbow movement, let's say you're playing faster and your elbow is not enough, you know, it creates some stiffness in your wrist. You need to think this way. Intonation and more prominent elbow movement. You know, so you don't just you know, focus on elbow movement and forget about everything. You still connect it through intonation. Like for example, here I'm playing. So I'm intonating, and I know that when I come back to this with my intonation, I just need to push my elbow a little bit more. So it's all together. <laughs> and so after that, you know, even I'm telling you guys, even if you're able to focus on these three tasks at the same time while playing. That's already the basic of correct on production. Congratulations. So the rest is real uh, up to you. <laughs> so when you become secure and comfortable with focusing on three tasks at once, then you might try to advance one of these asks, tasks, like imagination or intonation. And when you focus more on the new tasks, you will still make them in the system of these three basic aspects, imagination, intonation, and play. So you will not lose anything. And it looks like a uh, previous task, you know, I was trying to analyze how I, I feel while adding these tasks. It really feels like all the previous tasks are underneath of the new task. Uh, so, so this is how it looks like in my feelings when I play. 
Now let's just go through all these advanced uh, steps uh, quickly, so you have a better idea what I'm talking about. So before we're going through all the steps, uh, one more time reminder that first you need to make away from the piano work where you imagine every note in the timbre, movement goes under without touching keys, or at least without trying without touching the keys. And then after that, when you come back to the piano, this is what you do. Imagine the first couple of notes in timbre with movement and glissando, get a weight, play with correct movement. Imagine the next note in tempo movement glissando, intonate with articulations, let's say staccata, play with correct movement. Again, imagine, intonate, play with correct movements. All right, next, when you go to harmony, you know, you'll start advancing your imagination. So you will see that, you know, by the time you need to start advancing intonation, your imagination will be already in your fingertips. And by the time here you are advancing your imagination, your movements will be already in the, uh, in the kind of sensation, inner sensation muscle memory. Um, and how it works is that uh, imagine sound you know, will trigger characteristic movement. So even when you put all your attention to the imagination part, you know, your hand movements will be still there. So when you imagine sound with movement, your wrist will follow. So basically with the harmony, you imagine first couple of notes. With movement, glissando, you get a weight, you play, and then simply imagine the next note in timbre, harmony, movement, glissando, intonate with articulation, and play. Without much thinking about playing, what to do exactly, you know, your wrist album. Next, uh, do the same with dynamics, so just add dynamics to imagination. Again, f focus on the first couple of notes, imagine timbre, harmony, dynamics, movement and glissando, get a weight, start playing. Let's say forte. Imagine the next note in timbre, harmony, dynamics with movement and glissando, intonate with articulation, let's say accent, and play it. Now imagine uh, now add voicing to this. Imagine first couple of notes, timbre, harmony, dynamics, voicing with movement glissando. Get a weight and play. Imagine the next note in timbre, harmony, dynamics, voicing, movement glissando. Intonate with articulation, let's say tenuta. And play it. So it's always imagination, intonation, you play. Next note, imagination, intonation, you play. Then after that, we can go to intonation part. And the musical speech here, I mean, if you're not really advanced, you can sp skip this part. It's not that important. But basically, if we're going to phrasing, like I said before, so here, when you need to focus more on your intonation, you can uh, let go your imagination. So. By this time, imagine sounds will already leave the imprint on the fingertips. And correct touch will trigger imagination naturally while I'm playing. Even if only a slight shadow of the sound will be left on your mind, it's still okay because it's already in your touch, it's already in your fingertip. So this is very important. You see? So you imagine phrasing, you know, get a weight, you start playing without much thinking about movement, without much thinking about, you know, next imagined sound, just focusing on intonation. Intonate with musical speech or without end phrasing. Fingertip will already anticipate the next note, you play it. Intonate with phrasing, you play it. That's just that. So you completely focus on the phrasing. Then um, you might add a musical image, I call it like the color of intonation, basically the character of music. You tune into musical image, you get a way to start playing. Again, you intonate with image and phrasing. Don't think much about imagination, don't think much about playing, it will come naturally. You play. Intonate with image and phrasing, you play. Then add form to image, you know, the um, 
and then where are you? Is it the beginning of the story you're talking about? Is that the climax part? So get it together, image and form. Gather weight and play. Intonate with image and form and phrasing. Play. Intonate with image and form and phrasing. Play. And um, then you can again add time, so image form and heartbeat of music. Get away and play. Intonate with image form and time and play. And now by the time you add the timing, <laughs> the heartbeat, phrasing uh, will be already imprinted with an intonation. So by basically intonating, you will trigger a phrasing naturally. So this, you know, the, the gradations of energy in your intonation will be already naturally there. So you don't have to think much about phrasing. So your image form, heartbeat, got it together, get away to play. Intonate with image form time, play. And in the last stage where you add artistry to have confidence uh, performing on stage, you simply kind of tune in into how you speak about, um, how you speak up about image form and time through artistry. You get this feeling, you get away, you start playing, focusing basically only on how you intonate with artistry image form time, and then you play. Alright, so that's about it and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.